you know, the goal is to stay connected. You know, yeah. that is kind of our relationship goal, you know, as individuals trying to be in a healthy relationship, our goal is to always try to stay as connected as possible. And whether we're on a high or a low, mm -hmm. we're just trying to stay connected and, and then support the other person through that. Hello, 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 everyone. And welcome back to your weekly dose of The Squeeze. I am Taylor Lautner, and I am joined by my lovely wife, do, 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 Taylor Lautner. Oh, <laughs> sound effects. You're, yeah. getting, you're getting good at the sound effects. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm getting pricey, too. Oh. I'm like beatboxing sound effects, you know. Oh, this isn't good for me. Co-host. You're going to have to come up with some sort of payment. <laughs> we won't get into the details. Anyways. We're getting ready to go on another trip. Woo-woo. Mm -hmm. Woo-woo. <laughs> it's a little bit of mixed feelings for us. We didn't, you know, recently got back from a long trip to, uh, overseas. Yeah. And we missed our puppies. We missed our house. We missed our friends. Um, so we're <laughs> just recovering from that one. Yeah. It's going to be great, though. You guys, I'm going to, I'm planning. Don't quote me on this. I'm planning. Quoter. I'm going to try to vlog. Whoa. Our trip. Because a lot of you guys are always like, can you please um, make more YouTube videos? And I genuinely love making YouTube videos and I love editing the videos. Mm -hmm. But we have just been so swamped the past like uh, six, ten months. Hmm. Long time. So I haven't really had the chance to sit down and edit, even though that brings me joy. So that's a goal of mine is yeah. to um, start making some more YouTube videos. But we have a fun trip, which I don't want to share too much. Very fun trip. You guys need to follow along with us on our content. Yeah, we'll it's keep gonna be you posted because it's going to be epic. Yeah. Well, let's get into today's Can I just quickly, before we get into today's oh. episode, just I put it on my story like a week or two ago. Uh -huh. But... We've just been getting so many emails and reviews on the show that just have meant so much to us. Yeah. Um, I, I put a few of the reviews on my story, um, and I know the Squeeze account, maybe the Lemons account, uh, does as well. Um, yeah. But it's just reading the reviews and reading the emails, um, just how... The squeeze topics, guests that we've had on, you know, have affected, you know, you or a loved one, um, hearing your stories and just all of the feedback has just been um, overwhelming and just uh, really validates us yeah. and the reason that we're doing this. And it makes me really, really happy. Yeah. Yeah. Fear, um, just hearing that we have an email. For the first time, that's because you don't watch our episodes all the way through and don't listen to our <laughs> outros. So I'm going to take this time at the beginning of our episodes to tell you our email is lautner.thesqueezepodcast at gmail.com, um, where you can email us guests. We've actually gotten some pretty good guest recommendations that we've yeah. had on. Or you just sent me some recommendations from the email. and um, Can't share quite yet because we haven't um, filmed. But yeah, we've, we've gotten some really great um stuff and just like stories and ideas for some stuff that will be happening a little down the line um on the squeeze but also if you're listening to this and you didn't know that we have a youtube channel uh where we post our full 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 episodes sometimes some stuff gets cut out um of just the audio and our dogs are barking if you can hear them if not great i'm gonna keep talking um but youtube is where it's at so if you're watching on youtube if you want to give us a thumbs up, that's great. Um, you know, subscribe and all those fun things um, because we love what we do. And, you know, you guys telling us you're loving it or giving us recommendations of how we can fix it. We so appreciate that because we do this for you and for us because we love it. But we do. It's our fun little dose. We do. We do. Well, today we have an awesome episode. Um, incredible guests. Uh, we have the very entertaining, um, wise, 
and crushing it at the moment. Yeah. Nick Vile. Yes. Um, who is the host of his podcast, The Vile Files, which is just absolutely soaring to the top of the charts. And I am so happy for him because he uh, he just does such a good job. And he works really hard. Yes. Very, very hard. Yes. And I'm so glad that it is paying off. Yeah. Because he deserves it. Yeah. And he is joined by his beautiful, lovely fiance, Natalie. Yes. Um, who we've been wanting to meet for some time now. And yeah. we finally got to meet her. Yeah. And she is awesome. And um, before we get into that conversation with them, um, we do want to say to all the listeners and viewers, um, there is going to be sensitive topics discussed in today's episode. Um, so we do want to give a trigger warning. Um, Natalie was able to open up and be extremely vulnerable with us. And we were not expecting it. Um, we did not discuss any of this beforehand. Um, she herself wasn't planning on talking about this. Um, so I will say that we, we were not prepared for this. And I wish we could have, you know, gotten deeper into it as deep as she would have wanted to go um, and also provide on the spot resources and tools for anybody going or, ha you know, ha having gone through the same or similar thing. Um, but with that being said, um, we just, we feel so thankful that we can provide yeah. a safe place for our guests um, to talk about these things. Um, so, yeah. You know, that's the whole, the whole reason um, we started this in a very big thing of ours is, um, you know, we want our guests to feel safe. And, you know, this is their time to share um, what, what they want to share. What they don't want to share, they don't need to. Um, and Natalie is such a joy, ironically. Um, and, you know, I'm so proud of her for um, getting to this place where she is able to share her experiences. I have chills again as we're talking about this, um, just thinking back on the episode. Uh, but I think she's going to be able to help a lot of people uh, from her experiences and where she's at now and how she's growing. Uh, I think she is uh, proof that therapy is necessary and works wonders. Um, and also, just kind of bouncing off of what Taylor said, we will um, be providing some resources. Um, some links down below uh for anyone that wants that but yeah you know we we went to the episode um just wanting to talk about Nick and Natalie as a couple um because obviously we can relate to them us and them are very similar of you know both the guys have kind of been in the spotlight and Natalie and I going into these relationships not having that um so we're just we're was planning on talking about that but um you know, we got really honest enough with Natalie and it's a, it's a great episode, man. I'm, I'm it's a great episode. so stoked for you guys to listen to this. Um, and yeah, we love them both and we thank them for coming on and, uh, talking with us and nobody, nobody should have to go through what Natalie did. Um, but she is, yeah, a living, breathing example yeah of how strong you can come out of something like that and i commend her for using her story to to help others yeah enjoy guys natalie nick thank you for being here and welcome to the squeeze Ooh, thank you for having thanks. us happy to be here <laughs> okay so we start off each episode this beautiful jar here we have um 
very deep burning, um, passionate questions in there. If you guys um, would like to pull one of them. Each of no? us? Sure. I mean, yeah. if you want to pull not? two for the both of you or however yeah. you want to do it. By the way, you forgot the best part. The segment's called Citrus Got Real. Heck yeah. Thank you. Wow. Did you think of that? <laughs> did we think of that? <laughs> Somebody thought of it. Thought no, of it's it. pretty good. <laughs> I think I did off of puns on Google. <laughs> What do we have? Who wants to go first? Well, I, I'm reading it, so I suppose I will. Okay. What is something that is really popular now, but in five years, everyone will look back on and be embarrassed by? Mm. Men wearing Uggs? Because mm. I'm wearing Uggs right now, and I'm loving it. Oh, I you love, are. I do enjoy that. I think that I right thought, now. I thought you, I you know, like, you're a liar. I'm liar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, I was like, you realize we have cameras, right? <laughs> no, 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 not, 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 not in this Currently. moment. But I'm, I'm on an UGG. I, I just got my first pair of UGGs, and I, I quite enjoy them. Okay. And I find them to be fashion forward. Have you tried fuzzy Crocs? You do that first. <gasps> no, but my, I, I've just found out I, I, I have a friend. I guess it's more my sister's friend, but he works for Crocs. Oh. I just found out today. You should, you should try fuzzy that. Crocs. Mm-hmm. Are those fashionable as well as they're comfortable? They're Crocs. Of course they're fashionable. Okay, she thinks they are. You're either on the Croc be, train or yeah. off the Croc train. Yeah. But they've also had staying power as well. I don't know. What, what is uh, something they, else would be? They breathe, they breathe well. I'm, I stand. Like what's a really what they are, breathe what are, what are, well? popular <laughs> trends right now? Everything has come back. Like everything that yeah. we thought was done forever is now coming back. Uh, we were in so New York I don't know. over the weekend. You are? Yeah. Recreating our first weekend together. Oh, because I'm a romantic guy. Stop. Uh, yeah. But I noticed in the subway, I pointed out to her that like it's kind of ama- like some guy was wearing like you know I wear a lot of Converse, and there was someone wearing Converse, and there was someone wearing like these old retro Reeboks, and these, and it's just kind of fascinating to me how like tennis shoes are very, very they stand the test of time, and yeah. people are going back. Yeah, yeah and like everything's kind of new retroactive. Balance, yeah, the- like New Balance, you yeah. see a lot of those. Yeah. We have you know, some. I tried 30 to wear years them. ago, we thought we'd be having like space shoes, but yeah. everyone's like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just sticking with our plain old new balance. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So maybe. Mine is if you could teleport to anywhere on earth, Ooh. where Ooh. would you go? Oh. Teleport. Teleport. So you could go back in time. Earth. Right? No, that's not teleport. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's time traveling. <laughs> She's really smart. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Vic, cut that out. Um, see, teleport is, is, is it's a superpower that I would pick. And so wh- what's what's the most, I you think. Snap I, your fingers. Asia. I would go to Asia because it's, I, it's a very long flight. Because it's a biatch to get yeah. there. Oh. You couldn't teleport to like, I want to teleport to the first date we had. No? You couldn't do that even though it's in the past? You know what? I mean, we'll allow it. We'll go with Thank it. You. We'll allow it. What? Thank you, judges. I appreciate it. <laughs> I was thinking like the top of the pyramids or something. Yeah. Oh, whoa. If you could teleport. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. You got to think of the most inconvenient, pla- inconvenient place. Yeah, the flight thing, I think, really just stuck out to me. We just got yeah. back from London and it was a long flight. The flight back is so much worse. Yeah. So. Yeah. Probably somewhere like really far. Ooh. Thailand. I was going to say Australia. Fiji. Yeah, Australia. Yeah. So you'd have to fly over water for all those hours. Yeah, that's rough to get to. Pretty gone over that one. Wherever the most furthest majestic place in the world is, I I suppose that's what I would pick. Yeah. Yeah. Antarctica. You want to go there? Well, if I could teleport, I could just kind of pop in, check it out, (laughs) pop out. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know if I call it majestic, but maybe it is. Maybe in a way. I would. teleport to stagecoach so i don't have to make the drive the teleport drive. home from stagecoach the teleport they have helicopters from, for that they yeah. do <laughs> they do i'm just a cheapo um but yeah Same. they have like uber copter or something right do they <gasps> what I think so i think I'm definitely too cheap for that though yeah it's ridiculous yeah. that sounds terrifying <laughs> i just i would not like to do that how but. wait how was new york it was lovely it was yeah. the most magical thing so i Went home for the week to see my family. And Where, I lived home? in Savannah, Georgia. Okay, okay, great. So I'm originally from Auburn, Alabama, and then lived in Savannah for like the last eight years. So okay. that's where I go back when I go home. But it's where I was living when Nick and I met. 
And so he was in New York visiting or for work. And when we met. When we okay. met. And I flew up to meet him. So mm-hmm. we like recreated that weekend. Wow. He, it was all him. I'll give him all the credit. Um, oh. But he just like texted me. was like, I have a surprise for you. I'm like, he's like, I want you to guess. I'm like, what is going on? And so I'm trying to guess all these things. I'm like, dinner. Um, Her first guess was dinner underneath the Statue of Liberty. And I was like, <laughs> wow. Weirdly close, but like. No, <laughs> but I don't even well, want to do that. I, so I was like, sure you, like, I was like, is that what's yeah? It's like, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Wow. Like, Should we? Do we have to get on a ferry now? Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. It was really cute. He like came, mm-hmm. like stood in the same spot that he was standing in when I first walked into the hotel. You it was... really recreated it. Okay. So it wasn't just go back to okay, New wait, York. I, no. I, want, I want all these details now. Cause it sounds like the yeah, sweetest well, well, I got the idea cause she was in Savannah and that was the big thing to like meet there okay. you know um i i was staying at the williamsburg hotel when we first met and that's been a place we've we've revisited multiple times okay. yeah um we just kind of like and it. it's it, it is nostalgic for us yeah. and that's so sweet and so yeah when i got there when we first met i was you know i i went down and waited for her at you know outside the elevator and and she walked up and we met there and so i i, I made sure i was you know, standing there when she got in and, and then we visit the place where we first uh, went to dinner. And then we, and then we also kind of added in other elements to other weekends because we would go back to New York a lot. So we went to Peter Luger's, which wasn't something we visited on our first date, but it was a memorable, um, dinner experience because when we first went there, that was when she like first said she had feelings for me, said she wanted to be in a relationship and I turned her down. But it was also, it was memorable. Did you you really? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh Oh my God. So many times. (laughs) So many times. And like his response, it was like, I like, I like you. I would love to date you. And he's like, no. I'm like, okay. Were you like not in the mood to date? I was Was very, I was fairly self-conscious about our, you know, she was, we were long distance, you know, the age, age gap at the time I was very self-conscious about, and, you know, I just wasn't sure, you know, yeah. it, I, I wanted to get to know her better. And so at the time I was, yeah, I was, I was, I was pretty guarded. Yeah. So it was pretty nuts to be sitting at the restaurant talking about our wedding at the place that he like first rejected me. <laughs> so <laughs> it was pretty funny. full circle. Moment. Yeah, wow. we got the same table too. <laughs> yeah. that was, that it was yeah. pretty nuts. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Wow, that's a full circle moment. That's awesome. That's so sweet. Are you guys like close to the same age? 24. Oh. 26. Okay. I just turned 26. Gosh. Okay. Okay. She's There we go. Well, you're like, yeah, yeah, close. Almost quarter of a century. Yeah. <laughs> Almost there. It doesn't go up from here. Just kidding. No. <laughs> Great. I really, I really panicked when I turned 25. At it was 25. the hardest birthday I've ever had. I think, I feel like all my birthdays are going to be decent because he's five years older than me. So like, I feel like he has to go through like the birthday first and I see it's like not that bad. Like when he turned 30, I feel like that was your best birthday. Like that was like. I was, I was, I was excited about 30. Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed 30. Yeah. Everybody was like, you freaking out. Like this is going to suck. I'm like, no, actually 30. I'm excited about yeah. yeah, I feel like that was like your best year. So, thank you. I feel like as I'm like, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I feel like as I'm like getting older, I'm like, ah, oh, Taylor did it. It's not that scary. Yeah. There you go. I'm testing the waters for you. Yeah. I did want to say because I remember when you guys first started dating, and I'm, I'm, I don't even know why we have a podcast, but I don't keep up with news. I'm so bad at it. But the one thing I do remember is it was like, Nick's dating a surgical tech. And I was like, yes, for the medical field, people. Like, she is a yeah, gem. We, we should have known then. Yes. Yeah, we should have known it was going to work out because yeah. medical field. She loves it. She's yeah, I do. It's definitely like I don't know if I. I mean, I, never say never, but I just don't see myself giving it up. It's such like okay. I look forward to it. I love. I've definitely cut back on how much I'm there just yeah. because yeah. I'm busy with so many other things, but it's. I truly love it. Yeah. What like specialty? I'm for in? right now I'm with an ocular facial plastic surgeon. So oh, it's a lot of eyes. Oh, whoa. He's like the best eye guy probably in the world. People fly all over to come and see him. Wow. He's oh really gosh. all celebrities some, go to him. Yeah, pretty He's, good. Pretty good client list. She has, she has some good stories. Wow. Oh my gosh. Dang. So it's been, it's been pretty crazy. How long have you been doing that? 
four-ish years, maybe. Oh, cool. Yeah. And did you start that out here? Or were you still back no, at home? No, I was doing that in Georgia. Okay. Um, I worked for a reconstructive plastic surgeon, so it was okay. a lot of intense, like, gunshot wounds, yeah. car crashes. Yeah. A lot of breast cancer stuff. Oh, wow. It was very intense. And then when I moved out here... I kind of stuck with the plastic surgery just because it's what I knew. And then it was all like tummy tucks and BBL oh, yeah. and boob jobs. And I was like, I kind of want to get into something that like. Yeah. So the eyes has been a lot of fun. And I really like it. That's so cool. Yeah. I feel yeah. like that's like everything out here. When I graduated nursing school, that was like the first thing I started doing. But I graduated like or I started working right before the pandemic hit. But so then all of those closed. And then I was like, well, I'm guessing guess you're, guess guess. you're hopping into the hospital. and. Yeah. Yeah. She literally started in the hospital. Just Dang. was it just before or just after? Like it was after. It, no, I started like summer. six months into COVID. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I missed out on like the scary, like there's no PPE, but I got like the we have way too many patients flu season. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. pick your poison with that one. But I'd love to know what your first impressions of each other were. Going back to this New York thing, because I think this is so interesting that you were like, no, we're not dating. Yeah, I was going to say, sounds uh, like Nick's was get away from me. <laughs> oh, I definitely yeah. found her attractive. <laughs> there was that. She was very quiet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I was probably, I mean, I'll let her tell, but she was quiet. Um, Nick was mute. <laughs> Nick did not speak. Well, you know, keep, again, we, she slid in my DMs. We messaged for a couple of weeks and then we just like both met up in New York. And, I, you know, I think we were both a little like thinking the other person was a little crazy. Interesting. You know, yeah. for, yeah. It's like, why yeah. is it safe for you to meet me? You know, oh kind of like, it's yeah, like the first time you met yeah. was Blue. that New York. Yeah. Trip. We like, it That's was one of those crazy. things where she was like, I got some friends in New York and, I, yeah. and it, we kind of both knew that we'd end up just like spending the weekend yeah. weekend together. Yeah. But you know, like a good friends of ours who we saw again, saw this weekend to kind of recreate the weekend. I was just like, Hey, I got this girl staying with me. Like we got to hang out because I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't know how it's going to go. And, <laughs> um, so I think we were both pretty guarded and, um, yeah, and then she like shared some stories about her family or for at, at dinner, and like she Natalie moved to New York, um, what, 16, 15. 15, oh, oh wow, uh, to model, and so she told me that story, and I was like, who is this person? <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, oh my god. Um, <laughs> but um, as the week went on, I was I I remember, um, you know, just being kind of caught off guard by um how much i really really liked her and i remember talking to our friends about her because we went to central park and we were uh playing frisbee and nally was like 30 feet away and i was talking to my Mm -hmm. friend charlene about her and i just remember being thinking she was really great and i was i wasn't expecting that it was just more of a to be honest kind of a hookup weekend yeah um and uh uh, my, fr- I guess my oh, after the first week and my first impression was just how easy and fun she was to be around, yeah. because like spending a whole weekend with someone you don't really know, oof, it it can go, can go south horribly. pretty. That sounds fast. Yeah. yeah, and I I had the same group of friends like years earlier. Um, I was seeing a a, a girl, and um, it was early on when I saw her. And she was in New York and I was in New York. And my friends were in New York. So we all went out and like an hour and they're like, we fucking hate her. Oh my gosh. Um, and then I, as the night went on, I was like, yeah, she is kind of obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I oh literally gosh. never hung out with her again after that night. Oh, um, so they were a big barometer and they loved her. So oh. yeah. Yeah. they got to see. The we difference. love friends like that. That's yeah. awesome. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So Nick was mute. Nick <laughs> did not speak. It was a lot of like, I think he just didn't know who I was, didn't know really like how much does he really want to open up? And I think we were both kind of on the same and I'm a chameleon, I feel like. So I just match people's energy. Yeah. So I very much matched his and just was very chill. And, uh, but I knew, I guess after that weekend, I was like, I am going to spend the rest of my life with this man. And I knew it and he didn't. So I was like, I'm just going to, yeah. Hang on, because I know he'll come around. Yeah. And so I asked him several times today. It was my me. quiet confidence, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is a crazy story. It's really crazy. So for like nine or ten months, we went through this 
period of like where I was coming to visit him. That's wild. Or we meet time. New York a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Several always, times throughout that. I think it's like, it's like the second time, the second or third time. Because like the first time we met in New York and then like, she actually didn't remember that because we went back to Central, again, Central Park this weekend, like recreating the weekend. And we went in the afternoon and I, re- I, re- I distinctly remember walking from Central Park to head back to Brooklyn like we did that first weekend. And I remember... And Natalie didn't remember that, but we were walking and I remember Natalie was just like, so like, this is like totally cool if like, if I never see you again, kind of energy, but like, it was kind of her pitch to keep, keep hanging out. But she was playing the whole, like, I don't give a shit if it's fine. Like (laughs) it is what it is. Like, you know, I'd be okay. But I would be okay with it. And I, you know, and I kind of remember being like, I was very noncommittal, you know, I just was <laughs> yeah. very guarded. But then I went back to LA and like, I think every time we'd hang out the first couple of weekends, there'd be like a day we didn't talk, maybe two days. And then one of us would me- message the other person and then like a week would go by and then I'd yeah. be like, do you want to come out to LA? Um, and then like the second time she came out, I was driving her back to the airport and she's like, this will be the last time I'm coming out. Um, you know, because she was trying to like, you yeah. know, advance her. And I was like, okay, you know, I, I wouldn't give her anything. And, but then like a couple of days later, I would like message her, and, you know, we, I would, oh my gosh. we would keep kind of yeah doing that pattern. Yeah. Um, Fighting yourself. We, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. We were very addicted, I think, to each other. I mean, that we, I mean, in those nine months, like we weren't, we were living long distance and we, um, you know, we weren't, exclusive we were dating other people and pretty open about that but we i don't think we went more than a few days ever not talking to each other wow you know Jeez. i mean that and that's without Crazy. ever like but that's without like any expectations it's not like oh yeah. we're, we're, we're gonna talk now you know it's just yeah. like well we should talk and i'll call you it just it just was very organic yeah there was a chemistry there that yeah. it was mm-hmm. just like a natural thing for yeah, you we guys. actually tried not to hang out with each other it, no that way. didn't go well. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly didn't work. Assuming, yeah. sitting here. Okay, so you know the my dark navy pajama set that I've been wearing, the long sleeve with the pants, uh-huh. with the white lining on it? Yeah. That's very cute. Yeah. That's so comfortable. That's also hyper. Girl, you don't have to sell me on Cozy Earth. <laughs> Talk to them. <laughs> so if you guys haven't heard of Cozy Earth, they are one of our favorite brands. Um, we have had bedding from them for years. Bamboo? Bamboo. Organic bamboo, organic this, silk. This bedding is incredible, everyone. It's like the softest thing you're ever going to get into. But they also have women's loungewear. Um, and I have this, the cutest. Men's too. Lo- so sorry. They do have men's. Um, <laughs> the cutest long sleeve set that I've been wearing around the house that is so comfortable and so cozy. But cozy. It, it like looks stylish. Too, oh, know? their stuff looks great. I I just went on their Instagram like day before yesterday and found a couple things that I want to get. They have different hoodies um, and like joggers and it's made out of, you know, a similar material that they use to make their sheets, which are absolute heaven. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, th- their clothes look awesome and are the most comfortable thing you'll ever wear. I guarantee it. Heck yeah. Um, so Cozy Earth has provided an exclusive offer for our Squeeze listeners today up to 35% off site-wide when you use the code the squeeze. So go ahead, check out their website, 35% off using code the squeeze. Can I use that? Yeah, you can. Great. You actually asked us this question when we were on your podcast, and I oh, thought yeah. it was such a good question. Yeah. Was there like a red flag at first that like popped up that was either like Something in the other person or something that you felt as like, maybe it was like a red flag from like an insecurity, insecurity you've had from like a past relationship that like popped up when you guys like first started dating. I guess first started dating is over a very long period of time. Yeah. <laughs> but, this is yeah. first met. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want to go first? I don't know. I mean, probably just. Was how- the show red flag? Did you know about the show? So I found out about the show that weekend with our friends, Charlene and Andy. Oh, wow. Um, I asked her how they met. And she was like, oh, we're kind of all in the same show. 
that weekend in New York? In New York. So and you had been talking to him before this and you didn't know. He had been stopped that weekend by like several fans. And you're like. And I'm like, what? What is, what the fuck is going on? What? Oh my God. And he was like, oh, I have a podcast. I'm like. Okay. Okay, but you know, I don't. I, just, I wasn't a big. I don't know how you answer those those types yeah. of questions. It's a tough but question. It was just like, oh, you know, <laughs> I was tired of being like I was on The Bachelor, <laughs> and I honestly was just like, when I get asked those questions, I was like, sure, you don't know, like, okay, you know, yeah. Um, did you know? I mean, I guess the age gap can be your red flag. Did you learn was. about it that weekend, or did you know that going into the weekend? Learn about what the age? Oh no! <laughs> so I knew it about it. When when she first DM me, um, we started messaging, You're and like, then she she's ID? like, "What?" She, I carded her. <laughs> 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 he was like, "I want to see your ID." Stop. Um, That's <laughs> smart. Because I I, 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 I yeah, there's catfish people out there. I don't <laughs> fuck around. Yeah, and and so I she's I she we exchanged snaps, and then on on Snapchat you could call. You can video chat. Time, yeah. Okay. So I called mm. her and I had the cam- my camera facing the ceiling. So mm. she couldn't even see me. Because I've had people like screenshot and yeah. Yeah. do weird shit. And I'm like, show me your ID. Because I just wanted to make sure she was a real person. And yeah. yeah. And wow. So I knew how old she was. Smart. Wow. Okay. Wow. Smart. Yeah. That's very smart. Yeah. Tell her some of our friends to do that. I thought that was a red flag. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I definitely was just like, what is going on? Like, can I say hello first? Or like, I don't know. Oh my gosh. Um, Honestly, your persistence and like. It's commendable. Very commendable. Yeah. She's a she's a very determined person. Um, but yeah, the, the age for me was something I was self-conscious about. But there were no immediate red. I mean. Again, yeah, I think I was so self-conscious about that that, yeah. quite honestly, she made it very difficult to, you know, because I was like, in fact, on that walk on that walk home, I was like, we'll never date, you know, like just get it out of your head, you know. Oh my gosh! Um, and what she a charmer! Did, she made yeah. it, <laughs> she made it <laughs> so she made it really difficult for me to enforce that boundary, yeah. so to speak. Um, <laughs> oh so, my gosh! Yeah. It was quite the opposite. I was, I was more, she was full of green flags. So. There Love we it. Go. That, that's a good, that's a good answer. Love stories, man. They yeah. all got a, their own beginning and I like that one. Yeah. Thanks. That's, good. <laughs> uh, that's the first for me. So okay, so I'm tickled. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I'm tickled. So once you like guys made an official, you like obviously learned that he was like very much in the public eye. Um, I don't know, like, if that's something that you come from. But for me, when we first started dating, that was, like, no, I was just a normal person. Same. Um, so that was, like, a very large adjustment. I mean, even to this day still is. Um, for me, what was that like, um, like, for you and for you guys together with that? Honestly, kind of terrifying. I mean, yeah. I think I, we want, I just wanted to, like, push this, like, you know, sharing with the world as much as we could. Yeah. So I'm like, I just don't know if I'm ready to have a third party in our relationship and like everyone's opinions. And so you were wanting to hold back on it. Yeah. I was like, let's keep this just us. And, um, we were actually outed and then there was paparazzi outside of our house, like caught us walking. And then it was this whole thing. So it was out there, but, uh, it was definitely, intimidating yeah we yeah, took our for time sure. with it for sure yeah yeah Bachination is intense yeah well that's what i was just about to say is that you know i'm very lucky that like taylor's fans are just like they're so loving and they're so kind so like when we started dating like i didn't get any backlash but you know the fans of like reality tv and yeah. those types of people they, can definitely be they can be critical a, yeah at times can be a little less forgiving um or, but or overall opinion. i think it's been a generally positive experience i mean but yeah you know, there, there's pockets of people who, you know, yeah. Yeah. look for you things. Know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's definitely does. weird to have, like, I'm sure you can relate to this, have so many people give you their opinion. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I just, like, went, I mean, I would post and go about my day and didn't really care. And now it's like, oh, my God, wait, your feelings are hurt? Like, what are you talking about? I yeah. just posted, like, a picture of my morning coffee. Like, what, How did I hurt your feelings? And yeah. now you just have to think of so much, so many other people's opinions, and it's been yeah, overwhelming. But Yeah. 
we tried holding that back for as long as possible too. Um, cause yeah, as soon as you open it up and welcome the third party, it's just, it changes. Yeah, it's like by the time. Yeah. I think we had a pretty good connection with each other before you open yeah. that door, yeah. so to speak, because yeah. it can, it has its challenges. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I think we went like good, like 10 months yeah. before. About nine, 10 months. Was there a time where like after we were public where you thought like like holy shit this is this might suck was it like do you remember your first real negative experience um probably just like the rush of dms of like mean comments that about you know I'm a child bride and I, oh. you know, just the terrible, bride. terrible things people would call me. Uh, but I don't think, I mean, I think we navigated it fairly well child and you, bride. you, you taught me to not. I'm pretty good at ignoring things. Yeah. 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 So yeah. he gave me a lot of advice on that, which helped. Do you feel like it has like, cause I feel like with us definitely, it didn't take a toll on our relationship, but it definitely like either like, I don't want to say set us back, but there's definitely like speed bumps with it, like being public and like definitely affected our mental health. Do you feel like it like had an effect on like the mental health as like you guys together, if it was like individually or were you just kind of able to drown it out? I don't know. I'm, I've just recently started therapy, which oh, awesome. has been, uh, a complete like life altering oh, wow. experience for me. Oh, wow. I've learned so much just about, you know, the way I process things, the way I value people in my life. And I think the most important thing is probably just how learning how my brain works. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm in a specific therapy called EMDR. Oh my yes. gosh. We're, we're We've about been wanting to, start to do that. it. Oh, it's insane. Oh wow. It's so insane. So Wait, what is it know. exactly? It's like trauma. Um, I mean, you could probably explain it's it better. For, it's yeah, it's for people who've experienced any sort of trauma. It stands for eye movement desensitize desensitization and reprocessing. Mm -hmm. So basically, through bilateral vibrations in your hands, you hold these things that vibrate. It stimulates your brain. Oh, and then you have a licensed professional kind of guide you, mm -hmm. and so you're able to revisit trauma desensitize yourself from it and then reprocess it in a way that's like watching a tv show so it's been i totally insane for me for a long time i am like a compartmentalizer yeah. i yeah. think and for people who don't compartmentalize i think it's hard for them to understand nick is not a compartmentalizer <laughs> but um for me it was like putting every bad, traumatic, terrible thing that has happened to me, I would just put it in a box yeah. in my brain and live outside of it. And I was like, everything in that box is a lie. Like none of that happened to me. It was all a nightmare. Mm. And I honestly survived that way. Yeah. And I knew it wasn't healthy. But if I didn't, go about it that way, trigger warning, I think I probably would have taken my life. Wow. And, but now I'm in a place where I'm able to look at everything that's happened to me and accept it for what it is and acknowledge that I've survived and like, I'm okay. Mm. And it's really, it's, it's changed my life truly. And um, I think also just finding resources in mm. a way that I never had any before. Yeah. So I just lived with all of that constantly. And I think having a place to put all of your negative thoughts or trauma or anything, whether it's like journaling or yeah. some, having yeah. some sort of Whatever resource is, yeah. has just helped tremendously. So I like wow. give that to anyone if they ever need yeah. help. Just like getting it out of your body writing it down you can burn it you can yeah. Yeah. rip it up whatever you want to do but yeah. just wow. getting it out of your body I think is so important for sure wow well, so it's been really crazy you. thank that's, you that's like I mean I feel like any type of therapy is a big step but I definitely feel like EMDR therapy is like 
it just sounds intense and you're it's like so what crazy. the frick is this yeah. um but that is so awesome and, and that's for so people that do which i think both of us do i know i do for people that do just push things down yeah. and don't you know don't talk about it don't know how to yeah. right. like so, sometimes that's me i'm like yeah i'll talk about it yeah. but like i don't uh, how like i i don't know what to do show me the steps and, right but yeah that seems really helpful it's also like such a big part of it is learning how your brain works mm-hmm. which like there's so many parts to your brain yeah um but what i've learned specifically is that there's the cognitive part of your brain, which is all like your decision making. It's yes, no, right, wrong. And then you have the your lobe. Yeah. And then you right? have yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> and so then I'm you gonna, have I'm your learning, I'm he's listening. Yeah. Um, and then you have your brain stem and like your reptilian brain, and that's where all of your trauma is stored. And so when you're triggered and you like enter fight or flight, that part of your brain takes over. And like mm-hmm. your cognitive brain shuts down. Yeah. And so that's why you just like you're not making rational decisions. It's kind of like when you see like an adult act like throw like a temper tantrum. Uh huh. It's mm-hmm. like they're they're literally kind of going to their child like state. Yeah. You know, where yeah. they almost and it's 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 not like they're acting like a child. They're actually being their child self. It's yeah. kind of fascinating to like understand. Yeah. That. Yeah. Was there like a point that you hit that you were like? I like, I think I need to start going to therapy because there was like a big moment for me that I was like, I'm unwell. Like I, I couldn't remember my brain. Like I have severe PTSD from working in COVID. Um, I worked as COVID nurse and, um, I like would dissociate, like it was nobody's business, like so bad. And I couldn't remember, like there's this restaurant that we've been to multiple times. It's right around the corner, like drive past it all the time, whatever. Taylor was like, you want to go there for dinner? And he like texted me the name. I'm reading the name on my phone. I'm like, I know I've been here. I can't remember what this place is, if I've been there, but I know I've been there. What kind of food it is. Like, I couldn't remember anything about it. And like, I called Which was just like bizarre. Like before understanding it in the moment, I was like, are you okay? And like before like COVID, I would like pride myself on my memory. Like Uh I like, am like, I remember everything. Like I could, I know where the sock is and the third drawer on the left side. Like that is like my thing. And like, I cannot remember this restaurant that we've been to. And I like, that was my like breaking point where it had happened so many times. And like, my brain just literally like nothing was working. Yeah. And it honestly scared scared me. I was like, this is like not good. Like Mm -hmm. I need, I need help. Like, really getting to a point here where like this is going to get unsafe here soon yeah yeah so was there a moment that you remember that you're like yeah i gotta do something yeah i um kind of had all of these past traumas resurface all at once and it honestly kind of like exploded my life yeah um and that was when I was like, and I had tried therapy before actually Nick encouraged me. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was terrifying. I like had no idea how to go about it. I Google like therapist near me. It's someone online. I don't know what I'm doing. I get on this phone with this random person and we have two sessions. The second session, I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to tell you everything I've been through. I don't know if it works like this. And, um, I, this is the first time I've ever talked about this, uh, but I was, um, I was raped at 10 years old. And when I told that therapist this, she was like, well, why do you think he chose you? Like, why do you think out of all the kids, like he picked you? I was like, oh, holy fuck. Like, I don't know. And it terrified me. And I was like, I don't ever want to talk to anyone about this ever again. Like, mm-hmm. and so now I think having all of this stuff resurface and it all like slapped me in the face, yeah. which I guess I always knew at some point it would. I was like, I know this isn't compartmentalizing and telling myself it's a lie and it never happened like I know this isn't healthy and I know I shouldn't do this but like I'm surviving yeah and I think it all 
hitting a wall and blowing up in my face. I was like, that is exactly what I needed. And I immediately yeah. got into therapy after that. And it's been such a whirlwind ever since. That's wow. incredible. Yeah. Wow. It's been really crazy. I'm so sorry that you had to go through that, but I'm a person that is overly optimistic. And I think your story and just like the human that you are, why am I getting emotional? <laughs> um, but just like your story is going to, you know, encourage so many people that have gone through that or something similar and knowing that, you know, like I went through this part of my life early on and I've blocked it out for so long. And I'm realizing time and time again, that this is not, it's not healthy for me. And, you know, getting help is such a big step. It's a literally the biggest step the biggest. in my yeah. opinion yeah, um, sure. is getting help because you're finally addressing like those things that are in the scary closet and you don't want to mm -hmm. open that door up yeah. mm -hmm. um, so I just commend you for that because that that is a really big step and I think that you know your story is definitely going to help a lot of women because there's a lot Thank of women you. and men out there yeah. you know that have a similar story too. you know yeah. and to help them not feel as alone yeah okay so one pet peeve that oh, I have. Here we go. That is, you know, uh, something uh, that we have to talk about in therapy. Just kidding. <laughs> um, between my lovely husband and I is when he trims his beard, <laughs> his facial hair. And he doesn't all over clean the sink, all of it all, all over the, the counter. But ladies and gentlemen listening today that has a spouse or yourself that, that happens what? to you. I have a solution. What? For you. Manscaped has come out with the one and only Beard Hedger Pro Kit. This little guy is waterproof. So that means you can take him into the shower, shave your face all you want, and all that hair does not have to be on the counter. Oh. That just goes right down the drain. That's helpful. Yeah. That's lovely. It's cordless. Uh, it also comes with three free gifts, a beard brush, a comb, Scissors to ensure that you have all of the tools to have your perfect beard. It actually looks really cool too. Yeah. It's like sleek. Yeah. We just we just got the whole kit and yeah. the uh the trimmer. Uh it looks uh, very sexy. Yeah. I, I might say. Yeah. It keeps your it keeps your counters clean. Which was a no brainer for me. So you can get twenty percent off and free shipping if you use code the squeeze at manscaped.com. Again, that is twenty percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code the squeeze. Highly recommend that one. Yes. Manscaped. Beard hedger, one stroke, one guard, twenty links. Do you feel this has been a big thing for us as a couple? Um when I was going through my nursing stuff and was working night shifts during COVID, whatever. I started to dissociate really bad. And Taylor, like, didn't know how to, like, address it, I guess, towards me. Like, he he was taking it personally. Like, he was trying to love me more. And he was thinking, like, I didn't love him. Mm -hmm. Or that he wasn't loving me well enough because mm -hmm. of what I was going through and what, like... Yeah. You just couldn't help me. Yeah. We talked about this with Nick. And him like realizing that he can't do anything, yeah. you know, like he can support me, be there for me. Um, what has that journey been like for you guys as a couple? Well, we, we started couples therapy right when she started her therapy. Oh, okay. that's awesome. Um, kind of for that reason. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've been in therapy for a while. I started therapy shortly after COVID started. Okay. Okay. Um, I was, you know, not because I was, just, it, it was different for me. I, you know, I've felt like my mental health was generally solid, but you know, with the things I talk about on my show and yeah. mental health, I'm always advocating for therapy and yeah. I do struggle with anxiety. So I was like, you know what, why, why am I not in it? You know, yeah. kind of thing. And it's been really helpful for me. And I was seeing uh, her every week and then kind of at times I would taper back to every other week and, or pick back up when I needed. And then, um, so when she got into it, uh, we started, uh, couples therapy and it was, you know, we had just gotten engaged. So it was just kind of like, kind of a very similar to when I started therapy, it was just like, you know, this, this can only be helpful. Yeah. Um, and, um, there were, you know, certainly, you know, times, um, 
where I think that it created a disconnect between us. Yeah. Um, and as, as much as I might be aware of, you know, certain things in, in, in the mental health field through having the ability to talk to certain people and learn and educate myself. But when you're involved and when you're in it, yeah. um, it's a very different thing to process. Uh, and it's really, truly been a blessing. I mean, you know, for us, it's, um, it's, I think every time we leave, there's like a high, yeah. you know, that, you know, we feel more connected. And I think that's been the biggest benefit for us is that, um, you know, the couples therapy, um, and that, you know, it's, it's one of those things I'm really glad we did because, you know, for all the people I talk to in relationships, it's like people are always looking for, it's like they wait until you require reconstructive surgery rather mm -hmm. than like, yeah. you know, therapy is best served when it's like used as like a safety belt or a bicycle yeah. helmet rather. Yeah. But um, it just, it helps us stay connected. Yeah. And I think we, we, we use that word connected a lot uh, in our relationships since couples therapy where mm -hmm. we might, you know, instead of, instead of one of us saying, why are you doing that? Like, why, you know, or why are you being distant to me or why are you being cold or whatever? Yeah. You know, we'll say, I'm just not feeling, I'm not, I'm not feeling us connect right now. It's, mm -hmm. it's in the, we're using, you know, like more we and us language and things like that. Mm -hmm. But just with using the word connected, it's like, it's like you can almost visualize what that means, you know? And so like holding hands for, for example, like we, we always were hold, hand holders, but now we're huge hand holders, mm -hmm. you know, like when we're walking and or one of us is stressed out, the other person will be quick to reach out and grab the other person's hand. And it's just a very kind of literal, a literal soothing kind of sensation. Yeah. Um, and it's really, again, just helped us stay focused on, you know, the goal is to stay connected. You yeah. know, that is kind of our relationship goal, you know, as individuals trying to be in a healthy relationship, our goal is to always try to stay as connected as possible. And whether we're on a high or a low, mm -hmm. we're just trying to stay connected and, and then support the other person through that. So, and obviously couples therapy has allowed me to better understand, you know, her you know, compartmentalizing car, things and because yeah. and, that's definitely, it's, you know, I can, it can be a mind fuck for someone who, you know, I've been fortunate enough that, well, you know, everyone has their version of trauma. I've, I haven't experienced, I've had a very blessed childhood and, a, yeah. you know, very privileged childhood. And uh, I've been very fortunate to not deal with some of the horrific things that have happened to her. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so we, we kind of go about processing things a little differently. And so that's helped me out a lot. Yeah. 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 I feel that same way. That's sometimes, sometimes I feel like insecure about that because I feel the same way that, you know, growing up, I was very blessed and, you know, thankful for the life that, you know, just the way that I grew up and, um, just have never really experienced extreme trauma like that. And sometimes I feel like guilty for not being able to like, you're like, just not being able to do enough or the, you know, the other person, it's like, I feel like all I can do is like, listen and yeah. be there. And I have to tell myself like, that's, you know, I know as guys, we struggle with this, the just yeah. listening part. Yeah. You know, I have, it's like, I should do something too. Yeah. <laughs> but I've, I've learned that listening is a, a value add. Yeah. Um, I, I still have to be reminded of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I'm very excited to ask you this question, Nick. Everybody and their brother is starting a podcast, right? Yeah. Look at us. Even us. <laughs> you have a podcast. Uh -huh. It's doing all right. It's doing okay. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Um, it's currently number one in news and society, is it? It's number, it was this morning it was three overall in the world and number one in society and culture. Society and culture. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's doing okay. It's doing okay. Um, Oprah's trying to hunt you down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you, what do you, other than you just being magnificent, <laughs> what do you think it is about your show that has just taken off? And wh what do you think the secret juice is? Um, well, one, I love it. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, passion. Yeah. yeah. Wow. 
And I just, I just love doing it. When yeah. I first started doing it, I, I, I didn't do it for the money. I, I wasn't really making much money for the first yeah. couple months. So I think that's important for anything you do. You have to really love it because there is a lot of work involved in anything, you know, to, to do anything great, you know, and, and to be successful at something, you know, at, at the highest levels, yeah. you, it, it takes a lot of work. And if, if you don't have a passion for it, yeah. chances are you're going to, yeah. you're going to be like, oh, it's not really for me. Yeah. Um, so that's number one. And then, I think, you know, uh, it's beneficial. I think the things that we talk about on our show uh, resonate with a large group of people. I love talking about relationships and dating and social dynamics. Uh, love is a very universal language, yeah. regardless of your sexual identity, orientation, yeah. your race, ethnicity, age. Love is something we all kind of struggle with, connect with, identify with, look for. Mm -hmm. um, and And so... Uh, and then pop culture and, you know, I've, I've, you know, with my time on The Bachelor, I've been able to marry kind of my interest in both pop culture and relationships and dating. And, mm. and you know, it's throughout the time I've had my show, we, I'm always, you know, I also, I never get, I never settle in a yeah. sense. I, mm. we, we've always been relatively successful, but there have been peaks and valleys in the show. Yeah. And um, I think... It, a, a good time to work extra hard is when um, my, my actually my manager articulated this, but uh, well, so I'm I'm stealing it from him. <laughs> but I I I truly believe in this and have been implementing this for a long time. But the two great times to work extra hard is when things are either going really good or really bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and and specifically when things are going really good is, is a time where I've always tried to double down. Yeah, mm -hmm. not just sit um, back. and yeah. and so I'm always. I see the competition out there and I'm always, how do we keep it fresh? How do we keep it current? And so we just made adjustments to try to, you know, uh, integrate the things that our, our core audience wants to listen to. Like, you know, our core audience, our audience loves to li listen to various experts. Yeah. And we've had a bunch of different experts. We've had a professor from Harvard who taught, teaches a class on the science of happiness. And we had him in on it. It's very fascinating. We've had, um, you know, different therapists, we've had a dream expert on and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, but then we'd realize that like, well, people really love those conversations. They didn't necessarily pop the way you wanted them to, because yeah. it doesn't, it would, it would, your core audience would listen to it. And plus every other podcast tend, has a lot of experts. It's kind of a go-to podcast yeah. move. And so, um, then I kind of had the thought, well, well, we need to adjust a little bit, you know, I don't want to lose having experts, but I want to make sure we're keeping we're talking about the most relevant things yeah. you know and so for example when the johnny depp and amber heard trial was going on that was a you know a topic we covered a lot you know again mm -hmm. relationships and dating yeah. uh, culture perfect match and then we also had you know the body language expert that was you know mm -hmm. in the courtroom we had yes. her on and so that's why we wow. would still have the experts while still talking about topical relevant things and so mm. i've just been you know trying to stay current you know try to have relevant guests and then and i said the last thing is just also just kind of understanding my strengths and weaknesses and where mm -hmm. I, you know as someone who has come from you know reality tv or bachelor nation i think every reality tv person has a level of you know um, they want to separate themselves a little bit. Yeah. Uh, they want to elevate themselves. I've always said like going on reality TV gives you access, but not credibility. So, you know, mm. you want to get credibility. So you want to get the big names. You want to get the Taylor Lautners <laughs> on your podcast, you know, and, and get that credibility. And that's, and that's really great. Yeah. But I've also leaned into it, lean in and accepted that like people know me from reality TV. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, I, I have a lot of credibility in that space at least. And so where early on in my career, podcast career, I was a little more choosy with certain guests. I mean, I'm always choosy with guests, yeah. but now I've really embraced. And uh, I like to think that our show has, you know, we worked hard to become a destination for some of the bigger like interviews in the, you know, reality TV dating space, whether sure. it's a big basher get or love is blind or Vanderpump or, or things like that. I've learned to accept that like, maybe I should yeah. lean into this rather than try to run from it. And I think that's, that's been really successful for the show. Yeah. That's so awesome. I mean, I feel like you've really hit that nail on the head because 
every time there's like, I mean, it literally just happened. Like with the love is blind thing. I, one day I saw that it was like all like all this drama happened. And I literally said to myself, Nick's having someone on tomorrow. Yeah. Sure enough, he had yeah. a partial on or whatever it was. Yeah. And I was like, yep, I do. Like, I expect it now. And yeah. I'm not even like in, I don't even really do reality stuff. I mean, Taylor does, so I associate, I associate with it. But like, even me, like, I I know it's coming. Yeah, you know? no, it's, it's been great. And I think, yeah, I've, I had to be okay with, with being the guy who gets the big reality TV gets rather than, you know, yeah, look where I got I'm not you. Oprah, you know, yeah. and it's, and that's okay. You know, you're the Oprah um, of reality. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, you know, and I, I still like, I've had, I've, it's been great to, I mean, for, for where I come from, you know, literally having Taylor and you guys and you on, uh, Billy Eichner and, and, you know, got, I've gotten to become kind of quasi friends with Justin Long through the podcast. Someone I was a, you know, always been a fan of, of his yeah. work. So it's, I've been, it's, I've been very fortunate to have some really notable guess yeah. but it's been a bit a, a mix and yeah. that's been fun yeah i love that well, I, I don't think it's a coincidence that you're doing so well i believe the difference between good and great is this much and i think um your passion and your work ethic is what makes you great at what you do oh, thank he's you. the yeah. hardest worker yeah, I that can, i know i yeah. mean it's i mean i felt that when we were yeah. literally when we went to record and you were like telling us how much you were like taping we're like are you going home after this you're like no we're doing this and we got this and then we have this tomorrow and then this tonight i was like the frick? Yeah, no, I've turned it into a full time job. It's like you know, I have a nice team and and um, They're and great. we have an office and you know, like after we um got engaged, I was telling Nally, it's just like I'm gonna be at the office a lot because I want to <laughs> create like a culture in the office, and yeah. so it's important that I'm yeah. there. And so I'm, I'm you yeah. know, I came from a kind of a corporate America, and so. Uh, yeah, I don't just treat it like I'm the talent who shows up and yeah. record. I'm trying that. to be love more that. of a, a a mentor and a boss to, yeah. to the people who work for me, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. I, I could, I used to be an accountant. It's so much better. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh my god! So, do you hire an accountant or do you do your own taxes? Uh, He's I did terrible. not. He, yeah. I, I wish he would do my tax. He won't. No. <laughs> I was like, no. I'm, he also used to work at Olive Garden. I did. Ooh, Ooh. Yeah. those breadsticks. Endless breadsticks. Mm. Oh, Toscana soup. Pasta <laughs> fajoule. <laughs> <laughs> what an interesting word that is. Fajoule. <laughs> fajoule. <laughs> uh, would you, do you want to do 11 11 or a few questions from there? What do you want to yeah. do? Yeah. Do you want to pluck a couple favorites from it? We usually end with a segment called Lemon 11. It has 11 random questions, but we can just choose some of our favorites from it i love this one okay you go it's a bit of a tough one so if you don't have an answer it's fine great what movie or song title best describes your mental health today oh <laughs> i'm gonna go with thank you next by Ariana grande <laughs> yes it's kind of it. where i'm at right now okay <laughs> yeah thank you not next. me right <laughs> no no no. Oh, okay. no of course not honey of course not <laughs> Yeah, I love that energy. Uh, <laughs> You're like lover, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Perfect. What movie? He's really taking this one seriously. I, I, I think I just like darker movies. So I'm having a hard time. <laughs> kind of like You're like Pulp Fiction. Uh, it's like, what are we doing I love for dinner? Movie. Uh, <laughs> um, Django. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm gonna say I'm gonna say gross point blank. Where, have you seen that movie? No. Um, it's a great it's a great movie. Okay. I've never heard of it either. Okay. Isn't it like the title that describes? Not like the premise of the movie. Well, the, 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 well if I told you the premise, the premise is he. he, he <laughs> It's a guy who goes back to his ten year reunion, but he's a hitman and he doesn't want to any any fault any any and he. He left his prom date, like he stood his prom date up to join the army, became a hitman, and he came back 10 years later to try to t ask her on a date. Wow. Like, oh, an amazing movie. That sounds entertaining. Um, that sounds sweet. But like, it, it's, I, what I, I guess I was coming, one, I just liked the movie. And two, it just, I'm a big believer in, you know, I have this like damaged, not broken tattoo, but I think you can find beauty in, in, in the mess of things. And, you know, um, you know, I think we're very fortunate people, Nally and I. Um, we certainly, like everyone else, have our struggles and things can get real messy sometimes, but um, I'm very grateful for where I'm at. And and I think even during the messy of, of times, things can work out in the best possible way. 
Well, there we go. Wow, you really turned that, that into up something in the beautiful. Yep. Okay. Didn't see that that wasn't that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We have a professional here. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> What's the name called? Gross. Gross point we got to watch blank. it. It's great. Gross yeah. Point Blank. It's That's the high cool. school. It's well, Gross Point, Michigan. Oh, it takes yeah. place in Gross Point, Michigan. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Babe, you got to yeah. know these things. I do. It's I um. Um, the actors, the, the actor, yeah. Um, say say anything. Uh, uh, who's the actor in Say Anything? He was also. I have a computer in front of me. I could ooh. look it up. Uh, ugh, what can I think of his name? John. Ja- John. John Cusack. Yes, John Cusack, isn't it? And his sister's Mini in it. Driver. Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, Mini Driver. Yeah. Wow. Alan Arkin. It's also the movie. That's how I. That's how I got my uh, first ear piercing. Oh. Because my dad and I Edgy. both bonded over that movie, and in that movie, Mini Driver has an American accent. And then we were watching the Oscars, and Mini Driver came out with her British accent, and I was like, <laughs> "That's the the woman from Gross Point Blank." And my dad's like, "No, it's not." You know, because the accent threw yeah. him off and whatever. <laughs> And my dad would always, my dad's big claim to fame was he doesn't make bets. He knows he's going to lose. And I'm like, I'll bet you, I was like 18. I was, you know, but I was still in high school. Pierced. And I was like, and he was like, you can't get your ear pierced in my house. And I was like, if I win, you know, I could get my ear pierced. Oh my gosh. And I got my ear pierced for like two weeks and took it out. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Yeah. Here you are today. Love to tell the tale. This is my favorite question from the Lemon 11, but. It is, what is the most misunderstood thing about you? That I'm nice. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a dick, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. That's yeah. funny. That's a I'm a no. tall and aloof, and, and <laughs> I've learned that uh, has, has allowed some people to think I can uh, be a bit dickish. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I'm not. Yeah. yeah. You seem nice. Just, I have a, I have a hard candy shell on the outside. There we go. Yeah. That's a good answer. <laughs> Probably just that I have a personality. I kind of struggle with showing that on social media sometimes. I feel like a lot of people are just like, God, she's just yeah. a pretty whatever. face. And, no, and so I think a lot of people would be shocked to know that I do, yeah. in fact. Now he has more personality than... I have the personality for both of us. Yeah. Great. I cover his. Well. You make up for the she, mute. She yeah. indeed, in fact, mute, has yes. multiple personalities. <laughs> if you could go back to any moment, what moment would that be in your life? And what would you say to yourself? This is time travel. This, this is now time travel. Time travel. Right. Full I'm circle. here. I'm here. <laughs> so if you could teleport <laughs> yeah, to yeah. any moment in your life. Okay. I'm like, Asia? <laughs> <laughs> Caught late. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about my answer. I have so many. Oh my god! The first one came to mind is I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't quit baseball my senior year. Hmm. Okay. You you uh, played competitively. Yeah, yeah, I was pretty good, but um, I at that point got a track scholarship. Nick was oh. like an all star athlete. He's a state champion. Yeah. In track. Natalie loves, to embarrass me. Natalie loves to embarrass me by meeting people. And she's like, he was a state champion in high school. <laughs> and I'm like, no one cares about track no and field cares. or high school. Um, Wait, I care. What Thank in you. track? Uh, what did 400 you and 800. 400 yeah. and 800. Yeah. Oh, wow. Those are the long, the long runs? For the long one sprints. time around. And the eight is, yeah. They're brutal. I don't, I don't Lots do of any throwing of up. Yeah, yeah I, um, don't, I don't remember the last time I ran, to be no. quite honest with you. So... <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a We're going to get along great. Yep. Neither do I. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's tough because like usually you think about those things and then you think of, you know, how could I avoid something bad that happened to me? Right. Yeah. But, but I am old enough that uh, I really value my tragedies. Yeah. yeah. You know, I really, I really do. I've, I've, I've always, I've so far, I've survived them all and I'm, I'm better for all of them. You know, um, it takes time, you know, to move on and heal from those things. Yeah. But um, I really have. So I, I don't think I would, I don't think I would stop myself from 
avoiding any heartbreak or disappointment that I've experienced as a result. So I think it would just be some of those things where, you know, like, you know, I wish I would have gone out for football. You know, I didn't play football Mm -hmm. and like things that were, I think, you know, I would have taken probably more risks and more chances when I was younger because I I wasn't much of a risk taker until I was an adult. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. It is those tough times that shape you and, you know, make you who you are here today. Yeah. I would probably just appreciate things more. Mm. Yeah. And like not be such a bitch to my mom, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> great I answer. really regret that. <laughs> I tell her all the time we were sitting at brunch a few weeks ago and there was a girl who looked way too old to be speaking to her mom the way she was, but she was so oh, mean. Oh yeah. Oh my God. That's and right. I was like, oh, so I texted my mom and I was like, I'm sorry if I was ever <laughs> a brat to you or like said I hated you. I didn't mean it. Like, I love you. Yeah. This, this girl was so, it was an adult woman. She, it maybe college. Yeah, but she was being so mean. Oh God! Just, uh, and her mom was just like trying to be nice. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad you and your mom got through that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Perfect. Oh, good. Well, thank you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having this us. Was so yeah, fun. a lot of fun. Appreciate it. Lovely yeah. chatting with you. Yeah. Woo! 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 Love it. <laughs> yeah. Once again, th- huge, massive thank you to Nick and Natalie for coming on to the squeeze and talking with us about all things um they're just both a joy to be around like you said and um uh yeah that was it was a a heavy episode yeah um we once again are so thankful that natalie felt uh, comfortable enough to to talk about that um but we want to make sure, you know, we can do anything we can to help anyone that has gone through a similar situation. So I know we are going to provide Yeah, we're going to leave some resources. Um, also, uh, some therapy resources for anyone that is looking uh, to get into that. Uh, you know, you guys have heard us talk about um, how highly we recommend therapy. Um, so I definitely think that would be a great resource as well. Um, and just to know that, you know, if you're listening, you are not alone. Um, know that we love you. Um, you are so loved. Um, and there is help out there and we are proud of you, uh, for living another day and just, yeah, we're just so thankful to, you know, have you on here. It's well said. You are not alone. Even when you truly, truly believe that you are, it's, you know, it's, it's tough sometimes, but trust us, you're not. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's help out there and each day will get better. We love you guys. It's a journey. We're on our own journeys. We're thankful that we get to share our journey with you. Um, and yeah. Is that your kiss goodbye? Yeah, I just want to hug everyone. Okay. Why don't you hug everyone? I'm hugging you all in the comment section right now. That's what I'm doing. (laughs) All right. We love you, Lemon Drops. We'll see you next week. Yes. Bye. This podcast has been brought to you by Podcast Nation.